A half open tube is one meter in length. What are the three lowest frequency harmonics that this tube would produce? Assume a speed of sound of 343 meters per second. Okay, so if we have a one meter tube where this end of the tube is closed, then when we draw the waveform this length of the tube is only going to represent one quarter of the wave. When it comes to drawing the waveform of a tube, there's several different drawings we could do. One would be a drawing of the changes in pressure of the air in the tube. Another drawing would be of the variations in displacement of the particles of air in the tube. So if I draw the displacement of the air particles, Let's say this is the open end of the tube, and this is the closed end. We're going to see that particles near the open end are free to move back and forth quite a bit. And what we should find there is an anti-node for displacement. But what we'll see for particles that are near the closed end is that they can't wobble back and forth. They would hit the closed end of the tube. Um, so they're not free to move. So this is going to be a node for particle displacement. So this concept sets up a wave idea where we're going to have no displacement on the left but we'll have full displacement at the open end. This only represents one quarter of a complete cycle of the wave, though. If we want to see the rest of the wave, we have to extend the crest there. And not only that, but once we get back to zero here, we're going to have to now do the trough of a wave as well. And this shows that the actual wavelength of the fundamental frequency, it's called, for a half-open tube, is going to be four times the length of the tube itself. This will represent the fundamental wavelength. There can and will be other harmonics that are possible here, but they all have to start from zero at the closed end and they have to reach a anti-node on the open end. Our next harmonic needs to reach a maximum and then come back to where it's going to reach another maximum by the time it gets to the open end. If we are to continue this picture, what we'll see is this. Uh, we'll see where the wavelength, the wavelength of the next harmonic is going to be 4L over 3. So it's one third as long as the wavelength of the fundamental. So let's calculate the frequency of the fundamental wavelength in air. We would use the wave formula to find that, plugging in a speed of sound of 343 meters per second. Let the wavelength be 4 meters, because it's 4 times the length of the pipe. And we can now solve for the frequency of the fundamental. It's 85.8 hertz. Now if we use the wave formula on the next harmonic that's possible, use the same speed of sound, but now our wavelength is only going to be 4 thirds times L. 
which is 1.33 meters, I get 257 hertz, which is actually three times the frequency of the first harmonic. So for that reason, we would actually refer to this as the third harmonic, H3. Finally, we'll try to find the next harmonic that's possible. Okay, so our next harmonic is going to look like this. And that's going to be H5. As we can see, we have a complete cycle of H5 inside the length of the tube. Uh, we have one and a quarter waves completed. We'll have then that the wavelength of H5 is going to be four fifths L. So this is going to be four fifths times one meter, which is 0.8 meters. Okay, finally, I'll use the wave speed equation. And let's apply it now to this fifth harmonic. And the frequency I get is 429 hertz, which is five times the frequency of F1. And that's what we expect for a half open tube that you're going to have a fundamental frequency the next frequency you'll have will be three times the fundamental and the next harmonic after that would be five times the fundamental if we keep going the next harmonic would be seven times the fundamental and then nine times the fundamental and so on. All the odd harmonics would be represented.